every human being is made in the image of God. Yeah. And because they're made in the image of God, mm-hmm. there is certain value and certain worth and certain dignity that's inherent mm-hmm. to every human being. That's and right. it's called the Imago Day. Yeah, I mean, the Bible literally starts this way, mm-hmm. right? Like the first chapter. So listeners, if you've read the whole Bible, if you've never read the whole Bible, let me just tell you, the very first chapter of the Bible lets us know that God created all people in his image. Yeah. He created them male and female. So right away, that one verse in Genesis 1, God created them in his image. God created them male and female. So he's given us identity. He's given us our gender. He's given us personhood. He's given us purpose. He's given us value right away. And that lays a foundation for everything. And so right now, yeah, huge conversation, IVF world. And it gets to the question, what is personhood? When does life begin? What does it mean to be a person? Does this person have value or does this person have value? Do you have to be a certain age? Do you have to be a certain location? They have value in the womb, but what about outside the womb, right? Like, so we have all these questions and and the Bible already answered all this for us from the beginning saying, yes, they all have value that it begins at conception and you're made in God's image. Yeah. And not only does it begin at conception, but it, it, it goes until the Lord calls you home. Yes. Like, like yes. God is the author of life. Yes. Um, he determines when life begins. He determines when life ends. Yes. We don't, we don't have that determining factor. So yeah. think about this. Think about two things in our culture that are kind of taboo, right? You think about abortion, you think about suicide. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I tell believers all the time, abortion is horrendous because you're, mm. um, you're ending someone's life. Mm. Right. But it's more horrendous, right? When God looked at Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply, he's telling Adam and Eve, I want you to make little image bearers of me, yeah. and I want you to fill the earth with it, right? That's good. God wants his glory, his image to go to the ends of the earth. Come on. So what makes abortion an atrocity is not that an innocent life is being taken, which that's terrible. Yes. But it's that we as humans think we have the right to stop the glory and image of God from Come going. On. Come on. That's what makes it terrible. Yes. We don't have that right. No. And that's what makes suicide terrible. And oh, by the way, suicide is not the unforgivable sin. Right. It's not the unpardonable sin. I know people believe that. That's that that's not when the Bible talks about that sin that can't be forgiven, that blaspheme of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's talking about those who deny the faith. Yeah. Those who just deny Jesus yeah. as Lord it's and not, Savior, right? Not suicide. But what's terrible about suicide, not only, I mean, suicide is supremely selfish, yes, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it's us playing God, yes. Mm-hmm. But but it's it's literally you saying you know better than God does yes. about his image and his glory. Oh, no, absolutely. no, no. God wants you to carry his image, and he wants you to carry his glory to the ends of the earth, right? Mm. Because it goes back to that, that Imago Dei, like, like we are not our own. Yeah. You know, we were bought at a price, and and to your point, we have purpose and we have value, and that value is God derived. That's so that, good. That purpose is inherent in us. Yeah, there, there's a lot of theologians and scholars who, for thousands of years, have written on what is the meaning of being made in the image of God. What yeah. what does that mean? You're made in the image of God. I'm made in the image of God. And there's a and it's not just Genesis one throughout Scripture. There, there's a lot of passages that talk about the image of God. It talks about Jesus being this perfect image of the invisible God. It talks yeah. about us being conformed to the image of God, uh, that we are being renewed in the likeness of God. It, it shows us that even after the fall, even in a sinful, broken world, we're still image bearers. We're still made in the image of God. And, and the three main views usually on the meaning of image of God in theological circles is some believe it, it, it says something about us and the attributes of God, that because we're made in God's image that we kind of reflect some of his attributes. Uh, Others will say, no, it says something about mission and what we're supposed to do. Like, you know, John Piper says an image images, you know, so if you create a statue of George Washington, your purpose of doing that is that when people look at that statue, they'll think something about George George Washington, Washington, right? right. And to your point, as image bearers, Images should image, and the point is someone should look at us and it should point them to God, say something about who God is, right? We're out there being image bearers. And then the third view is this idea of relationship, that being made in God's image, which, by the way, 
humans, mankind, are the only thing in creation that is said to be made in God's image. Dogs are not made in That's God's right. image. Giraffes trees. are not made. Trees are not no. made in God's trees image. Trees don't look like God, bro. And the stars are not yeah. made. <laughs> yeah. So it's uniquely human. And one of the understandings of that, one of the interpretations of that is it means that only humans can have this intimate relationship with God who created us, right? And I think there's some truth to all three of these. You know, Augustine, Douglas Moo, and others have said that being made in the image of God means we have capacity for a relationship with God, right? So, so that's that theological foundation. But the modern-day application, we can't overstate. This has implications for, yes, yeah, suicide, abortion, IVF, racism, human sex trafficking, pornography, euthanasia, euthanasia, right? Like all of this comes down to, is there value in life? What does it mean to be a person? And yes or no, are we made in God's image? Because if we are, then it has implications for all of these things. Yeah. And those implications are so deep and so wide because I personally believe that this is one of the, this is one of the biggest issues in our society that's plaguing our society that mm. nobody wants to talk about or address. Yeah. When you lose the Imago Day. Oh man. When you lose the inherent value in humanity and a human person, yeah. bro, everything goes to pot. Somebody asked me one time, they said, Chris, how do you know the gospel has taken root in a church? Mm. And my answer was simple. It's when a janitor can disciple a CEO and no one thinks differently about it. Come on, that's a good word. That's how you know when the gospel is taking root because the sin of partiality has been eliminated Yes. because we're no longer valuing people by what they add or don't add, by what they look like or don't look yes. like, by what they drive or don't drive. We're valuing people because they are made in the image of God. That's it. That's They're it. They're made in the image of God. Yes. They have inherent dignity. They have inherent worth. They are, they are worthy of love mm -hmm. and honor and respect and kindness for nothing else yes. if they're just made in the image of God. Come on, that's and, it. And when we can start responding to people like that, right, mm -hmm. then we can start practicing Philippians 2.3. Think about this. Philippians 2.3 mm -hmm. says, considered others is more important than yourself. Come on. You can't do that if you don't understand the Imago Day. Yes. Because you have no reason to consider somebody as more important than yourself. Yeah, you have no reason to. If they don't have value until you've learned how they benefit you, then you're never going to put them. And, and that's what we do, right? We that's meet it. someone, and whether or not we value them, whether or not we respect them, whether or not we love them, we, we almost put it on pause. We're like, well, that's an unanswered question. We'll see. And, and we spend time getting to know them, and at some point, maybe we decide, you know what? You, you do benefit me. Yeah. You do contribute something to me personally. Therefore, you have value. And that is not at all what we see in the gospel. Nope. And praise God that he doesn't treat us that way. Come on, I mean, bro. if God was waiting for me to get to the point where somehow I benefit him right. before he cares about me. Wait you know, a long time. <laughs> wait a long time. I mean, the Bible says while we were dead in our sin. Offering nothing, bringing nothing but sin to the table. Yeah. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Come That's on. the kind of value. Why? Because we were made in God's in image. image. And he came to rescue yes. these image bearers who had been fallen, who, who were sinful, who were dead in their sin. He, he, you know, so many have said it so well. He didn't come to make bad people good. He made, came to make dead people alive. alive. That's right. It. And so praise God. He values us because we're made in God's image. The listener right now who's thinking about ending his own life. Come on. You were made in God's image. You were made in God's image. Like you, there is hope for you and there is purpose for you. Like God has promised that. Yeah. And you have value. You have worth. If everyone in your life um, doesn't believe that or if everyone in your life is telling you something different, Listen to what the Word of God says. Yeah. The Word of God says you're valuable. Yes, the Word yeah. of God says you're loved. The Word of God says you're important. Mm -hmm. The Word of God says you have purpose, right? You don't have to take your life. Yeah. And and you shouldn't end your life. No. The, the glory of God, the image of God is impressed upon you, man, and you get to carry that forth oh, in a dark and dying world.